you don't read the newspaper, you're uninformed. If you do read it, you're misinformed. What is the long-term effect of too much information? Information, information, I just need some information. I've been dying, I've been dying, is it lack of education? I've been reading, I've been reading without any transformation. I'm addicted, I'm addicted, is it overstimulation? Hey. Welcome to the Success Report. The Success Report. Hear ye, hear ye, come one, come all. You are listening to The Sixth Sense Report with Joel Nikoloff and Darnell Samuels. I hope the audience is prepared for just a little of me and you now, bro. Oh, it's been a while. It's been a while. But but you know what? Technically, that that's what the, the listeners wanted, right? They wanted more interviews, right? So, unless, unless less me and you. <laughs> well, I mean, they came here for me and you, and they're sticking around for the interviews, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So this, uh, but this, I, I think, um, I think this this episode is uh, a long time coming, and it was inevitable, and I think it's 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 necessary to talk about, right? Um, and yeah, is religious exemption biblical, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because because there, there's already an assumption, right? Like, oh yeah, of course, uh, of course, but there's Christians who actually disagree on the issue. Um, so, so we're definitely going to get into that. So, for the listeners, uh, the flow of the conversation is we're gonna um, we're gonna look at um, the law, like a government hermeneutic. Then we're gonna look at um, three points, three uh, good arguments uh, from the Liberty Coalition website on religious exemption, and then we're going to uh, give us give you guys our two cents. Right. Um, and so to start things off, we want to start with the NBA. Mm-hmm. <laughs> which, which I've been uh, thoroughly enjoying. Um, be, and I've heard someone say it this way. You're getting a more nuanced, educated perspective than you are in anywhere else of mainstream media. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you mean by that? In regards to the NBA? What do yes. you mean? Yes. So like you're hearing a couple of the players um talk about their natural immunity and the conversation around that the, the like that's something that you know our politicians in Canada aren't talking about they're ignoring the fact that natural immunity is being ignored they're ignoring the fact that you know we've in the history of vaccinations we never have ever vaccinated someone who's previously had the virus that we're vac- that we have a vaccine for right so my point is like uh, that was that was an argument by uh bradley beal i think yeah the shooting guard on the wizards yeah well and and so technically i think all three of the guys bradley beal if i understand correctly is the one who's like an educated in this field like he's got a degree in in something related so he can speak to it somewhat intelligently or or from you know his learnedness um and and so that's where it's i i'm i'm encouraged by it because it's forcing the conversation um technically if i'm not mistaken wiggins i just heard him say in in the conversation because to, as of today wiggins has got the vaccine uh um, what yeah he gave in but well, yo yeah. <laughs> yo joel you know what i was gonna say i'm dropping the bomb on you you, to- <laughs> you you know you know what i was gonna say before you said that i was gonna say now i have a reason to cheer for andrew wiggins because yeah. like he's for you guys who, who don't know andrew wiggins is probably well at the time when he was in the high black school, sheep of the, canada well not no well <laughs> not not the black sheep he in high school he was the number one player in the country not just canada but america one of the most hyped Mm-hmm. High school mm-hmm. players to come out of this country. Period. Um, he did well in high school. He did well um, at Kansas. Big hyped guy, you know, Canadian guy. Um, he's from. Gosh, I forgot now. Um, but he's a local guy, you know, from Ontario. Yep. Yep. And Vaughn, he's from Vaughn. And and when he got to the NBA, I felt like he he underachieved. So that's why I'm saying, okay, now I finally have a reason to cheer for him because, you know, um, I, I didn't I didn't know he was walking with the Lord. Um, but he said, okay, religious exemption. Okay, he's standing up for his Christian convictions. Um, <laughs> and yeah, and 
Yeah, and so he. So let me let me uh, recant it. I guess I don't know. Well, no, let me let me read what uh, some quote. I watched the interview this morning. Let me read. I'm um, on the Yahoo News article on it. Um, yeah, go ahead. So he's like, I feel the only options were to get vaccinated or not play in the NBA. It was a tough decision. Hopefully, it works out in the long run, and in ten years, I'm still healthy. Um, so he had applied for a religious exemption. They denied it, or or I guess the local San Francisco board denied it. Um, he, the other thing he said, and I don't know if it's in this article, but what he was talking about was like, I didn't want to do it. I felt coerced. You know, he, he basically still sort of, he was actually like, I hope other people continue to stand against this. Like he, not like me. <laughs> well, he, and, and I mean, he basically was like, you know, I felt like I didn't have a choice. Like he's, he's speaking as a person who did this under duress. Um. And, you know, I'm sure some people might say like, oh, blah, blah, blah. like for him, you know, I think the other thing he had mentioned somewhere in there that like in the last couple of years, he had had a really bad allergic reaction. Mm-hmm. Um, and now he carries an EpiPen with him all the time. And, and it was just like, I think that also played a factor into it, just making him un- anxious about all of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll try to put up this. Uh, it looks like this article that I found doesn't have the... Um, the, the the full let's say uh context to his quote so i'll put a better better one in the show notes page um i was a little surprised you weren't uh you weren't you weren't up on the news man but oh, i man, you know man I've been, I've been busy i've been busy man don't worry um, it's, it's a good thing that you're you know not always ear to the ground on all this craziness yeah yeah no it's funny because i think and, and I think this is good because it, it kind of leads into the conversation because you know before he was like oh Religious exemption. And so let me let me read from this article. And it says, uh, the NBA had said it reviewed and denied Wiggins' request for a religious exemption and that he would not be able to play in Warriors home games until he fulfilled the vaccine mandate. Anyone 12 or older is required to show proof of vaccination to attend indoor events at Case Center. That's where the Golden State Warriors play. And that message is on the Warriors website for fans. Wiggins declined to explain what those beliefs actually entail, saying it's none of your business. That's what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's the problem. I think, I think, and this is where the conversation is going. Um, The difference between convictions and opinions, mm-hmm. right? And and just real quick, just to be clear, the difference between an, a conviction and an opinion is um, an opinion is something subjective, right? It's just your opinion. It um, kind of like uh, um, James White says it best: if someone can talk you into it, someone could talk you out of it, mm. right? And mm-hmm. then a conviction is something objective out outside of yourself that can't be denied. Right. It's just, yeah, it's just one of those hills that um, you're going to die on. And so when it comes to religious things, religion is usually a thing of conviction, right? Versus opinion. And so it's funny <laughs> not to laugh at my guy, but it's funny. He's like, oh, okay, yeah, you know, it's, you know, religious, this, that, this, that. But it, it looks like it was more of opinion than a convict of religious conviction. Well, and, and I mean, the only problem i have with your definition Mm -hmm. is like can it be my conviction that i think Mm -hmm. that the benefits don't outweigh the cost and Mm -hmm. could i have that conviction changed because i now think the costs outweigh the benefit or did i say the backwards now the benefits outweigh the cost right so like my point is that, like, I know what you're saying about opinion. I get that, right? Like, if you think about it in a theological sense, um, you know, my opinion on head coverings or something, whatever, some, some, yeah. you know, non-relevant topic versus my convictions about Jesus and, and dying on the cross, right? Like, I think there's a clear distinction there. But when I have come to a conclusion that, let's use the vaccine in this scenario, the vaccine benefits are not significant enough to justify the cost i could have my mind changed but could i not say i have a conviction that this is unwise yeah 
I think so. Um, I think, well, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm following your train of thought, that can, are you saying like, can convictions change? Um, well, I, I, I guess, I guess that's what I'm asking because the way you used opinion sort of presents it like, oh, it's, it's, you know, it can change, but to some extent it's, it's not a sincerely held position is I think what you're saying about a, a, an opinion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if it's sincerely held and, and you know what, there's nothing wrong with opinion. And I think also like theologically speaking, um, there is room for an opinion. So for example, Let's nuance the conversation. Um, primary issues, secondary issues, tertiary issues. I'm sure mo most people will agree. Primary issues are convictions. Like that's not like Jesus Christ is, 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 is God. Like that's, <laughs> that's a primary conviction. Um, the Bible is the final authority on all things, right? On the final authority, right? Um, God has revealed himself as triune. Right? Three persons, one essence. Right? So these are the things um, that are primary. But then you have secondary issues that, you know, oh, before um, I believed in speaking in tongues and now I don't. Mm -hmm. Or before I used to believe in um, baby baptisms and now I don't. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, and then tertiary, and then tertiary would be like um, eschatology. Um, like in what way, what method? Um, do you think Christ will come back? We all agree he's coming back. It's just a matter of how. So that would be like a tertiary. So the, the secondary and tertiary would be opinions, but the primary would be a conviction. Now, I would say, it, you speaking in tongues is a good example. I would say the problem with saying opinion would be if I now take it to the biblical text about going against my conscience, if it might be my opinion that speaking in tongues is no longer uh, a you know a gift that happens today. Mm -hmm. So wouldn't I be going against my conviction if I started doing it? Sorry, I don't understand. So like wait, if wait. I if I was in an atmosphere that I felt you know uh, everybody else was doing it, I felt peer pressure to like participate, and I started you know oh like to, oh. Uh -huh. so my point is you have <laughs> a conviction <laughs> like you're at a Pentecostal youth conference. Yes. <laughs> Yes, exactly. It's good to Shout out the Winterfest. Right? Or uh, I was going to say, uh, you're at the, the church. What was that? Uh, watch the fire. I don't know what it's called. Something. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, Catch yeah. the fire. Um, catch a fire, catch a fire, um, yeah. So, yeah, that's my point, right? That, that you're in that context. And now, if it's just opinion, how can you call that sinning against your conscience? But if it's a conviction that this is not, you know, ongoing, and you do it, arguably you're sinning. And so the, the reason. Well, well, uh, uh, okay. Well, we'll 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 get to that. We'll we'll get to okay, that text. We'll but uh, yeah, but I wouldn't. But okay. I wouldn't say yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go that far um, okay. to say that. But we'll we'll get to that. Okay. Text. So uh, to my point that I'm trying to get at though is like I'm trying to push back that some of that get like calling it opinion to me is like, well, like you know, think about how hard John MacArthur stands on the the no tongues thing. Like, how can you say that's not a conviction? Um, well, until, well, you, you know it's an opinion when you change your mind. Okay. Yeah. If you can change your mind, it's an opinion. Yeah. I'm not changing my mind that Jesus Christ is God. Fair. <laughs> right. So, so um, is your, uh, yeah. now, is your point, though, that, like, because, you know, here's a good example. Um, with, go back to when we talked with, um, about vaccine hesitancy, right? Uh, Christian vaccine hesitancy, right? The topic came up about abortions and or aborted fetal cell, I should say. If it's your opinion, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, Joel. We're gonna we're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. We gotta. Oh, okay. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, mean, yeah. That's gonna okay, come up. That, we're gonna get there. But no, I'm not. What I'm trying to talk about though is that your position changes because you under you have a more nuanced understanding. Oh, with these vaccines, it's in the development phase, but not the final product. So but I'm saying it's not based on what you know about the vaccines, but what you see in the text. As whether it's a conviction or opinion. Yes, that's all I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get to that that, that section about fetal cells and so forth. <laughs> yeah. So okay, so so the first thing we have to talk about with this conversation is um the political or uh, 
government hermeneutic. Uh, for those of you don't, who don't know what um, hermeneutic is, a hermeneutic, well, the term hermeneutic um, is, um, is basically means uh, the science, or the hermeneutics is the science of literature, the science of reading. Uh, so kind of like from the, kind of gets its name from the Greek, Greek god Hermes, the god of, um, the god messenger. So basically, yeah, hermeneutics is a science of interpreting text. And so when we use the term hermeneutic, it is a principle or a framework in which we interpret the scriptures or interpret a literature or interpret a text. So for example, um, in the blog post I wrote about um, reading while black but not under attack, right? There's a black hermeneutic, an Afrocentric hermeneutic to reading the text. And so the hermeneutic I'm asking about, like why is the government asking or what are they proposing in regards, what are they looking for, what qualifies something as religious exemption? And so I have this article here and it says, and the article is from Osler.com. Um, so it's like a, a, a legal a legal website that covers issues in, in Canada and the US. I'll put a link to it in the show notes. And it says, what is a religious exemption? An exemption from receiving a COVID-19 vaccine may be available where an individual cannot be vaccinated based on a ground protected under the code. Most requests for human rights-based exemption from mandatory vaccination will be based on creed. Under the code, creed can include religious beliefs and non-religious beliefs belief systems that resemble religion. Among other things, an individual's claimed creed must have a connection to an organization or community that, pro that professes a shared system of belief. To support an exemption based on creed, an individual must provide an, and must provide objective evidence that their <laughs> that their claimed creed religion prohibits vaccination against COVID nineteen. Many religious leaders and authorities have publicly and repeatedly urged vaccination against COVID nineteen. Additionally. Personal preferences or philosophical objection to vaccination will not support an exemption. In its September uh, 22, 2021 policy statement, the Ontario Human Rights Commission stated that while the code prohibits discrimination based on creed, personal preferences or singular beliefs do not amount um, sorry do not amount to a creed for the purposes of the code. So what'd you, what'd you think about that, Joel? Um, I, well, first off, I thought the human rights declaration was, was literally like propaganda. Um, because technically my, my instinct is like, wait a second, shouldn't you be ruling on a case? And, and maybe it's again, I mean, a lot of people say the human rights court is a kangaroo court. So I'm trying to apply some, some, concepts of take uh our episode um a couple of weeks back or well, a couple of months now almost where we were talking about the law uh with chris christopher kinsinger kinsinger i was like i'm gonna say his last name wrong if darnell doesn't jump in here <laughs> um <laughs> uh he talks about no precedent is better than a bad precedent Right. And, and the reason I bring that up is that I was thinking about, oh, shouldn't a court or a law system be making a judgment based on a case in front of them? And, and so for the Human Rights Council to make this like declaration, uh, I thought it was, that's why my instinct is, is propaganda. It's them supporting their government without actually having a case that they're ruling on. Now, as I said to the very beginning, Maybe the fact that it's some, very much a kangaroo court and doesn't follow the regular rules of court law systems uh, is to where maybe there's a little bit more validity to that statement. Um, but I, I say that because they, they've basically sort of made it sound like, oh, you can't make a human rights claim without really putting substance other than saying, well, because the government said so. <laughs> like, to me, that's the substance of their argument. Um, so... So like like I mean, do you think they're really like 
So you're saying that they're not trying to create, um, find religious exemption? Well, I, I would say their their statement, like the the argument against, I would say the human rights violations, is, you know, per- perfect example, um, would be if somebody has a basis for religious exemption, just let's go use the the abortion, right? If their position is I as a we're against abortion. And personally, I do not want to use a single product that is involved using, um, you know, any sort of abortion or aborted fetal cells or whatever in their testing. Mm-hmm. That is a religious conviction. Uh, I would say, based on the definition you read, as long as I can get people to validate that that's a, you know, let's call it a Christian position or, or within my religious, the fact that I hold to the conviction of I'm not going to use any products, i.e. the application of that commonly held view, to me, that's where things are a little squirrely because I shouldn't, ex- and again, we're sort of talking ignorantly because, the re- and, and I think ignorantly is the, the only way anyone can talk about this is because there have been no courts, there has been no legal actual deliberation of this issue, even to the take the idea of like, the government limiting the rights and freedoms of anyone who doesn't take the vaccine. Well, go back to the government needs to prove that that is demonstrably justified. Well, when is those court cases going to happen? Years down the road or in, you know, uh, Liberty Coalition Canada on their podcast announced they're going to sue one university. Why? Because they're trying, they're only doing one lawsuit because they want to take it all the way to the Supreme Court and set a precedent for the next time. Mm, mm. Right. And and so this is where so much of this conversation, I think, when it becomes, you know, for for us, for the layman, there's a failure to really understand how systems that are there to protect our rights actually work and how they're actually going to play out. It's not because the Human Rights Council put forth a statement or because, you know, Doug Ford passed a law or or, you know, Trudeau from his podium as a dictator pronounced something to be true. Like that's not how our systems resolve these problems. No, that's mm-hmm. not to say that the, the the system will come and say, oh yes, this the government has violated your rights. And yes, we're gonna undo the the laws that they've done. Mm-hmm. But I'm not saying that that's the conclusion. The point is that actually finding out what the courts think is years of litigation away. And and so mm-hmm. Um, what I've, I don't know, our boy, David Lynn, actually, apparently has had a lot of success <laughs> getting vaccine uh, religious exemptions approved. He's been posting okay. them on his Instagram page of like okay. testimonials of being, people being like, thank you so much. Mm. Um, mm. And, and so, but I think the, the issue with the religious exemption, if I'm not mistaken, this is a company issue not the vaccine passport issue, right? So if it, I I mean, obviously we're talking in a very early stage of this and how things play out in the future is, is different. But if I understand correctly, let's, let's assume we're getting to the point of the QR codes issued by the government. The government is going to issue QR codes for medical exemptions. Meaning I could go to a store, someone could scan my QR code and let me in because I have a government pre-approved medical exemption. I don't believe, and I could be wrong here, I don't believe they are going to be in the business of giving religious exemptions. The religious exemption is going to be with your employer who's put in a policy saying, oh, you need the vaccine. And now the religious exemption applies in that realm, not so much in the government QR code realm. Um, and then when it comes to, yeah, but, but again, I, I'm speaking a little bit ignorantly because these systems have not yet been rolled out. We, we, we really only see it playing out at the employer level. Um, and, and I would just say, you know, thinking about what we see with the liberals in the last five years, I'd be shocked if they give out any religious exemptions at all. So I, 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 yeah, I think, I think I'm go- going to be correct in my hypothesis that that religious exemption comes down to a, let's call it individual company level and not, uh, the government QR code piece. Hmm. Hmm. 
Fascinating. I think, I think when I'm, when I'm, when I look at, um, the, the statement, one of the things that stick out to me is uh, they, um, the person did their homework <laughs> who put this together. They, they did their homework, um, in the sense that they made it difficult for Christian or for, for, um, for any religion, I should say, to prove religious exemption. So, so look at this phrase here. So to support an exemption based on creed or individual, an individual must provide objective evidence that their claimed creed religion prohibits vaccination against COVID-19. And so what that means is that um, they want expli- uh, an explicit context. They want explicit text. Um, so if, so if, if you're not a religion of the book, <laughs> you're sunk, right? <laughs> but if, if, if you're a religion of a, of a book, then you would have to find an explicit text that prohibits you from vaccinations or maybe even COVID vaccinations. And so then the, 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 the second part, <laughs> they say, um, additionally, and this is applying to the subjective aspect of it, um, additionally, personal preference or philosophical objection to uh, vaccination will not support an exemption. So it's just like I was saying before, right? Um, you have uh, the conviction aspect, the first part they talked about, the conviction, the objective um, proof that your religion is anti-vax. <laughs> Jesus was an anti-vaxxer. <laughs> <laughs> type of thing <laughs> but then and then you have um but then you have the opinion of the personal philosophical preference which they're not going to acknowledge so so this is important because now it helps us to say okay well when we come to the text right when we're going to look at our text we're going to be like okay well can we meet meet these demands or these stipulations um but i i will also preface also that um as we're talking about the law aspect, um, we should also mention that um, this is from the Liberty um, Coalition page, and this was just a separate point I wanted to make, that it says, Christians and all Canadians are entitled to freedom of conscience and religion. Expression, thought, opinion, and, and belief as fundamental freedoms in Section 2 of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. So, so with the legal part, there's, there's the Constitution. So we heard what the government's saying. In whatever policy, but we have to remember that the Constitution is what guides our government um, in a sense of checks and balances. Now, I'll just preface and I'll say, well, it's not as good as um, the American Constitution and how and how it keeps their government in check, <laughs> their country in check. I'll, but that's that's a, that's a debate for another show. But I, I just want to just quickly, just for people who are listening, because I'm sure people are listening and they have their notepad and they're like, "Yo, come on, Joel and Darrell, give 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 me something to not get vaccinated." <laughs> So, so I'm gonna just quickly mention um, these um, these um, sections from the uh, Constitution. So, Section Two: Everyone has the following fundamental freedoms: freedom of religion, expression, peaceful assembly, and association. Section Seven: Everyone has the right to life, liberty, security of the person and the right not to be deprived therefore except in accordance with the principles of fundamental justice and then section 15.1 every individual is equal before and under the law and has the right to the equal protection and equal benefit of the law without discrimination you want to touch that joel jeezy um yeah that's I mean, it's the, the, so so I I would say my position is largely that actually that, that religious exemptions, medical exemptions, are you playing the game? What do you mean? So what you have read to me about, or what you have read sections two, seven, 15, one, and, and the constitution itself, uh, along with let's say um the canadian immunization rules 
and the essentially and when i say canadian immunizations you're just gonna have a hard time finding it but in essence um the 1997 immunization in Canada law essentially says vaccines are not mandatory in Canada and you can't restrict anyone if they don't accept a vaccine. Whoa, 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 whoa. What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> Wait, what? So I will, uh, <laughs> I'll put a link in the show notes page for um, We Are Essential. Uh, or uh, let me, it's uh, we are all essential.ca slash knowing your rights. I'll put it in the show notes page. Basically, there's a video. Uh, two videos where these guys went to Eaton Center and essentially used the law to tell the cop to go away when the cop was trying to kick them out for trespass because they didn't follow the vaccine passport law. And they were able to correct... Oh, it's, not, it's, it's not Chris Sky, is it? No, no, no. This is uh, okay. this guy, Vlad, <laughs> um, Vlad okay. who's who's been part of We Are, Essent- we are All Essential. Okay, okay. I thought it was the incident with Chris Sky, man. This these guys are sitting there with the law demonstrating, oh, you're saying I'm trespassing? Well, here's the trespass law. And based on what this guy just said, I don't that doesn't qualify as a trespass. Now, if you are a nuisance while trying to stand on your rights, you could be considered under a trespass. But the point is, so I'll put this link in the show notes page, but the the idea Mm -hmm. here is that the way the laws are written today, enforcing the vaccine passports is essentially invalid. That is the position these guys are taking, and they're doing it by bringing the law so that when a cop shows up to try to enforce, they go, well, the law says you're not allowed to put a, a policy in place that violates what I was referring to before, which was the immunization legislation. So yeah, from uh, 1997 or May 1997, I'll try and find a, probably a web archive link for this because I'm pretty sure the the document that I'm looking at is a picture and it says this document is currently offline since the start of COVID-19 pandemic. But anyways, the commentary in this, the third paragraph of immunization in Canada says, unlike some countries, immunization is not mandatory in Canada. It cannot be made mandatory because of the Canadian constitution. And only three provinces have legislation or regulations under Health Protection Acts to require proof of vaccination for school entrance. And just for completeness, recognize that that uh, immunization records for the provinces can technically be exempt just by signing a document acknowledging that you don't have them. But the point is that it actually says all they're doing is just identifying, yes, we didn't do this on purpose, but it's identifying that it's not mandatory and that if you actually try to hold someone compulsory to vaccinating you're in violation of this law and that's where to me the human rights is is having a conversation the human rights stuff is saying oh well you didn't get exemption from the vaccine passport but that goes back to where i said originally that the court systems haven't even deliberated whether the vaccine passport is in violation of the constitution or not. And and that's sort of more so my position on all of this that in the name of safety we are taking away rights in hopeful, I would say most people are hopeful that things will go back to normal. Mm-hmm. But if uh if I don't butcherize the quote, uh, Thomas Jefferson said, those who want safety, who those who are willing to give up safety for their or sorry, those who are willing to give up liberty for their safety will have neither. Mm. And and so, as much as you know, uh, I think the religious exemption stuff might make sense for some people. Uh, to be honest, you know, my attitude is that: Do I really want to play the game? Right? Like, I think the vaccine passport itself is unconstitutional and immoral. So why would I want to get an exemption? To participate in that program, mm-hmm. yeah, you're gonna you're, you're gonna take your ball and go home. Yeah, I I mean my attitude is, and I said it on the show uh, last week. If my church starts requiring the vaccine passport, I'm going to another church. If if a restaurant is only going to serve takeout to the unvaccinated, uh, I'm not going to buy takeout from you. Like, why would I give you my business? Mm-hmm. And and the reality is, I, I I don't know if I said it on the show, but I've said it a bunch of times. 
the only way that that type of behavior really starts to make a difference is when the vaccinated who agree with us that this is a bad idea, they don't think it's wise, they need to take such actions. And and mm-hmm. to some extent, we are seeing it, I think, a little bit. I mean, I know a lot of people who are like, who have messaged me and said, I got the first shot to protect grandma, but there's no way I'm taking boosters. Because, you know, they're they're seeing what's going on. They think the passports are exceptionally f- stupid. Now, I would I haven't asked them specifically, but my question becomes, well, are you participating? Are you taking advantage of the the freedoms that Justin Trudeau has given back to you? Or are you saying this is stupid? I'm going to make the businesses who willingly uh, side with their abuser for the last year and a half <laughs> to pay more punishment. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. I, I mean, you're, you're laughing, but but I honestly, that's how I see this. Businesses have been abused by government for a year and a half to the point where they have Stockholm syndrome or or something like that, where they're willing to abuse others to prevent them from being abused. Again, i.e., they think by doing the vaccine passports, we're going to prevent lockdowns and we're going to prevent the government from telling me I can't run my business anymore. Right? It's it's I want to prevent harm to me, so I'm willing to harm others. And and I would argue it's out of ignorance and desperation Mm -hmm. but that's where the only way this and and this is what people have been saying from the beginning the the, this stops when people says say it stops when the people stand up and go no and and i don't know if you've seen like in europe one of the things they did was they had a picnic protest they would literally go in front of all the shops that were enforcing the vaccine passport they would go have a picnic on the street and eat their own food in front of all these businesses and actually it's already happened in calgary one of them, some they've they've organized one of those already in Calgary. Mm. Yeah, no, that, no, you you make a lot of great points, Joel, um, in regards to the law and our rights and, and the liberties, and that are pushing people um, to make a decision and, and and to and take a stand, and and so like I guess looking at the scriptures, I'm thinking like, okay, well, what what verses are people standing on? To, um, to um, stand up for their rights, so to speak, and so so one of the common, um, well, four of the common um, arguments that Christians are making is that um, the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, one should not put anything potentially harmful into one's body. Uh, vaccines were initially derived from aborted um, embryos. Um, therefore, one should not one should have no part in the abort abortion industry. Uh, the next one is it is for liberty that Christ has set us free. Therefore, one should not feel obligated to take a vaccine. And then uh, taking the vaccine shows loyalty to the state rather than to Christ. Therefore, taking the vaccine is like taking the mark of the beast. Right. So, so those are, those are some of the, uh, <laughs> those are some of the, um, common passages and, you know, it's crazy. Um, you know, uh, well, I, and I would thank- say just to be clear, I think a lot of those are bad arguments. Just- oh, okay. Okay. Um, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Well, you know, Thanksgiving's coming up and so, um, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure the religious exemption debate is going to be, um, you know, hot, hotly debated between um, Uncle Curtis and um, cousin Kevin. So, 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 we're getting you guys ready for um, turkey dinner um, <laughs> this weekend because it's going to drop on Friday, right? So, <laughs> yeah. But yep. okay, so, um, so yes, okay, okay, yes, Joel. Um, I would agree with you as well that I wouldn't necessarily um, agree with 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 those theological applications um i don't think i I think it's a stretch exegetically uh exegetical meaning um reading it reading um reading out of the text its context versus eisegeting reading your bias into a context so i i I think i think those interpretations off especially the mark of the beast (laughs) you would well you're gonna hear me get get on the mark of the beast and um so i think I think the mark of the beast is an interesting one um, because if we apply what Mark Thiessen said last week, 
um, mm-hmm. or Michael Thiessen. Mm-hmm. Um, he, uh, he would say the passport represents um a mark of the beast. I thought he said the mask. He said the mask and the passport. Okay, because they are symbols of non-compliance, and the and the and and in essence, he sort of says the and and I I I get the exegesis here. I think it's actually not crazy. The question becomes: Is it sound? That's a different question. But but what he's saying is that. You know, if you think about the idea that the mark of the beast is what allows people to participate in the market, right? So the the nonconformists are extra, you know, pushed out of society. Um, is a is a little bit of what he's saying, and and he would say the Jewish star was a was an, a, a mark of the beast, and and again, his view was that there are mar- there are marks of the beast, as in what does that represent? Over time, there's a number of them, and there is a final one. And so um, I think what's funny is he's actually saying those who say the vaccine itself is a, is a mark of the beast, he would disagree with. But it's the passport system that goes with it that would be, represent a mark of the beast under his, let's call it exegesis, which mm. I would argue you could disagree with. But it's not crazy, like. It, oh, no, I say I'd say it's crazy. Well, uh, and but you would also take a different hermeneutic to the entire book of Revelation than I think he would. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I think. Um, so well, my point, no, I guess, just there, to there, there's clarify, points we would agree. Under his yeah, hermeneutic, right. it's not crazy. Under your hermeneutic, it would be crazy. Um. Well, I, I, I think, I think. Um, Michael and I, most Christians would agree um, that, you know, we, we let scripture interpret scripture. Mm -hmm. Um, I think me and where me as a, like a Bible study teacher. And when I, when I work with my students, um, I believe that, you know, God want, God is the clear communicator. We're not. And I think, it's important to empower and and put what's the word put put the power back in the hands of the laity and the people and there isn't any kind of special knowledge in that that one uh, there's one like king on top of the church or one theological giant or a SME a subject, <laughs> subject matter, matter expert. expert. Yeah, so like like in the body of Christ we don't have SMEs. Well, if you're a good pastor, um you don't present yourself as a subject matter expert. Um Pastor Glendon, my pastor at Jarvis, um he has a doctorate. I don't. Um but he never comes to me like a subject matter expert. He never presents himself to me like a subject matter expert. Um he's always saying, "Okay, look, like you can do what I do." That's why he preaches expositories. Like this is you can do what I do. Um Right. And sorry. And, and the point I'm making is like, for example, just not to get off track, but I think these are, these are good, um, hermeneutical principles to work through. And I guess th- that this is, can be another conversation for another time. But the point where I would disagree, um, is just for me, where I stand is you want to stay away from newspaper eschatology. Okay. What, what do you mean by that? Right. What did it mean to them then? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's it that's it you what did it mean audience? to them then what did it mean to them then yes because what it meant to them then will mean to us today mm-hmm. so if if john interpreted interpreted the mark of the beast as vaccine uh, <laughs> as uh, <laughs> the vax, you know getting the vaccine or whatever the case may be um, then okay, there, there, there's an argument because Paul, because he's seen it as that. But I, I, I think, I think we have to make sure that we, we, we reach back then, deal with them back, what it meant to them then. Um, extract then, the principles, and then um, apply the principles today. Right there, yeah, and then, and then be careful of the newspaper eschatology, um, because throughout the years of church history, I'm sure people have been plugging away at what the mark is and the mark is this and the mark is that and it's this and that and it'll change 10 years from now and then it just makes 
um, these things relative. So th th that that that's all um, where just a tidbit of of exegetical principles for the listener that you guys can apply um, mm -hmm. to all mm -hmm. to all texts. But yeah, th that's something um, we'll come back to. But it's funny because that's not the main three verses we we're looking at or the three sections. Mm -hmm. So from the Liberty Coalition. So I just I, before before you do I I do want to there was I actually wanted to address the 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 passage about your body as a temple. Okay. I wanted to address it because I was intending I was hoping maybe to talk about it when we had uh, Rebecca Del Schneider on the podcast uh, mm -hmm. with vaccine hesitancy because I I mm -hmm. thought you know her her talk her her stuff on this is really good, but I was disappointed that in her stuff like while I agree with her conclusion. I didn't agree with her or or I was maybe disappointed is the right word that that there wasn't an identification of like wait a second this is just bad reading of the text because if if you go and read the text the whole like the entire chapter that that verse is in about your body as the temple it's literally saying in the verse other than sexual Im or in the text other than sexual immorality there is nothing you do with your body that inherently is sinful Mm, good point. And, and and so to say, and this is where I would say, get, getting a tattoo is not inherently sinful. Go back to, you know, old school Exodus, tattooing yourself for the dead, right? It's it's what is the purpose of the thing you're doing with your body, with the exception of sexual morality. Mm -hmm. And and so in that text, when people turn around, and go, well, my body's the temple. I can't put toxins in my body. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, we can come up with a number of examples where I just, I hope most people would say, uh, yeah, okay, that principle doesn't apply in this context. Because of sexual immorality. Well, because the, they're, they're using the principle of, oh, I can't do X to my body, right? Like, I just think of like, does that mean someone's not going to have chemotherapy because it's mm. a toxin they're putting in their body that might mm -hmm. save their life? Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. some people might take that approach, but I would say that's not what the text is suggesting. What did it mean to them then? And, and so my point, though, is also that, that people will take this principle that's not really in the text, but then apply it, picking and choosing where it applies. Mm -hmm. So they haven't extracted that principle and then applying that principle universally, mm -hmm. right? They don't apply it when it comes to the amount of sugar they consume. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They yeah. have only apply it when it's the thing that they don't want to do and they can use it as a justification for their position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good so, point. Like, yeah, so the idea of bodily um, defilement, um, that idea of bodily defilement that, um, you know, my temple, my body's a temple of the Holy Spirit, um, so I can't contaminate it with um, no, those I things. Think, I think you could say something like, I need, to, I need to be a good steward of my body. I'm responsible for my body. I don't know that you would totally get that from that particular text that talks about your body being the temple, but my point is that if you wanted to take that statement, oh, I need to be a good steward of my body. Okay, now that principle, are you going to apply it universally? Or are you going to pick and choose when you use that argument because it fits the agenda or the position you're trying to make? Yeah, good point, good point. Okay, so from the um, Liberty Coalition, they had um, a religious freedom from vaccination coercion article and they had and, and basically these were like well, it's the, a declaration and just for context uh they have what about 15 people that have signed it um and then if you go to the view all signatures page currently there's thirteen thousand people who signed um oh, okay. the uh let's say the declaration mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so obviously make sure it's in the show notes page um yeah Okay, and so now there's the three main arguments I, I thought were really interesting um, that that we um, can kind of look at real quick is the first one is Christians are required to honor the sanctity of human life, including prenatal human life, and therefore protect unborn children from medical um, experimentation in the production of some vaccines. Genesis chapter 1, 27, Genesis um, 9, verse 6, and then Psalm 139, verse 13 to 16. So yeah, now now you can launch off on, on that um, part. Yeah. So, I mean, and, and that's, I think, you know, what we said on the episode with, with Rebecca, um, 
I think, and and I think she sort of talked through that issue very well. Um, as as you, you know, me and you had a, a good back and forth as well regarding, hey, if someone's conscious conscience is, I don't want to, you know, take any vaccine that is, you know, has aborted fetal cells or uses aborted fetal cells in in production. I, I, I our conversation was you can challenge that conviction or that you know let's call it opinion based on earlier discussion you can challenge that opinion but if that person is not convinced by your pushback or challenging asking them to then go against that to me that's a really good example and I sort of already said this that's an example in my opinion of religious conviction that they have that would really really struggle to not meet the definitions that they've laid out like I don't I don't see how you if someone holds that position again you need to hold it consistently with regards to a you know a good example uh on that episode I brought up was Al Mohler's discussion on you know uh in vitro right making sure that you're not aborting the extra fertilized eggs because you didn't want to have six kids by accident because of the method that in vitro occurs right so there's a there's a requirement to be consistent in if you are trying to make that argument my position or challenge to people would be you better be consistent in that position. Mm-hmm. Otherwise yeah. the religious conviction argument sort of falls on its face. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, for me, it's just a matter of, I don't, I don't see that holding up long-term um, once they start coming out with other vaccines that don't use abortive fetal cells. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and I think um, I could be wrong, but for the most part, it almost always shows up in production or, or sorry, in uh, confirmation testing. Um, it, but it doesn't uh, always show up in the final product. Yeah. All right. The next point is Christian parents are instructed to nurture, provide for, and raise up their children in the Lord, a responsibility not given by God to the state or any other human agency. Deuteronomy chapter 6, um, verse 5 to 9, and in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4. Mm-hmm. What what uh, what's why did this stand out to you? Like, um, it it was one of those things that I, I it never occurred to me, and I, I guess you know these these ones mm-hmm. were informative. So like, I'm thinking this is an issue of sphere sovereignty. Mm-hmm. So I think this is a good argument for parents choosing not to vaccinate their children. And for those who don't remember um, sphere sovereignty, sphere sovereignty is God has uh, created institutions with their own um, circle, sphere, reach of responsibility. So for example, those institutions are the individual, the family, the church, the state. And so sometimes those spheres overlap. And then you have kind of uh, some spheres um, overextending itself. And so this sphere is is in relation from the institution of the family, the home, and the state. And the state saying, oh, you know, vaccinate your kids. And as a parent, you have a right to say what what your kids can do or not do. Yeah, and I think um, that's a bigger issue than just this vaccination stuff. Um, it's sort of showing up in the U S more so with regards to the, you know, in Canada, we're, we're so socialist that I would argue there's very little pushback plus the way the systems work right in the U S you've got the school board system. You've got much more like, you know, elections and, and different things that, that give people the ability to sort of, let's call it change course. And mm-hmm. so the reason why, like you've, there's videos and our, our boy, uh, Corey DeAngelis has been. He has a tweet. I'll, I'll try to find it. Basically, he's showing that these, you know, school board execs or or teachers union execs, essentially saying like, parents being responsible for their children's education is is like wrong headed. Like it's essentially that they think the children are property of the state. Um, and I think you we in society are going to continually see that trajectory. Where the state continues to try to claim sovereignty over your children, um, and so I think it's a as much as you brought it up here, I think it is a huge issue, um, and and people will throw out the worst examples, right? Like, oh, what about the parent who beats their kid, or like, what about the parent who doesn't care for their kid's education, and and 
I would say there's room for a conversation. How does society deal with those things? But the answer isn't to make the children primarily responsibility of the state. Mm -hmm. You know, that's good. That's good. And now the, the last point I thought was interesting or probably pretty good argument or we'll see. Um, (laughs) Every Christian is commanded not to pass judgment upon others over disputable matters, but rather to honor personal religious convictions and individual liberty. Open bracket, including anything one understands to be unhealthy, such as certain foods, smoking, drinking, alcohol, or employing experimental drugs for treating illness. Close bracket. And so that's from Romans 14, 19. verse 19, and 1 Corinthians 8, 1 to 13. Yeah, that I, I would just say one thing I really appreciate about the Liberty Coalition, they have, you know, scripture references for basically almost every single component of this uh, mm-hmm. declaration, at mm-hmm. least for the non uh, legal stuff, right? When it gets mm-hmm. to constitutional stuff, they obviously. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, yeah, every point, which is about, you know, they're like, whereas, 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 there's about 10 of them, um, and they all have scripture references, which, which I mm-hmm. fully appreciated. Mm-hmm. So, what do you think? What do you think about this um, this section? I, I, to be honest, I think it's really important with respect to unity of the church, right? And again, if I go back to the episode with with Rebecca, uh, I was very uh, impressed. You know, impressed may not be the right word, but I was very satisfied with the types of things she was saying about the importance of the church. You know, for those that have a different opinion than you with regards to vaccines, uh, you know, essentially don't allow this to be a divisive issue within your church. Um, And so I think that's where I think people on both sides have to really check their heart, check their, you know, mental state with regards to those that have made a different decision than them. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. Like, um, I love, love your neighbor. Oh. You mean the, the the exploitation of that statement? Well, you know, you know, it's funny. Um, I never, I've, I've never said this before. Um, with the issue of love your neighbor, but I think, and, and this is a point from Mark Dever, and he said, you know, we have to look at texts and say, okay, well, can you can you derive the opposite from it? Because sometimes we throw around these Bible verses and we're like, well, yeah. If you see it from that perspective, but it can easily be turned around to be made to argue against your point, right? So the way, like, so for example, um, love your neighbor, right? From the other perspective would be, um, for, for, for the anti-vax perspective would be, um, okay, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Mm-hmm. Okay, leave me alone. I'll leave you alone. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and the statement I like to use is uh, loving your neighbor also in te- includes telling them when they believe a falsehood or telling them the well, truth. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. So, you know, so sometimes with, with those passages, it's just like, yeah, well, it's it's general enough. It's implicit enough um, to kind of leave. You can take different angles and you, and you can, it can support either argument, either side. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um but my, my, I think when I look at this this section, uh, what it makes me think is that uh, both of these passages from Romans fourteen and in First Corinthians eight, so both of these passages are about uh, the Christian conscience in the church, and I don't see the state or businesses honoring um, these um, convictions, mm-hmm. right? And so that's why I, you know I was just like, well. You know, based on the hermeneutic <laughs> that the government is using, um, yeah, there isn't an explicit verse because that's what I was looking through when I was reading through the report. There isn't an explicit verse that says, um, you know, don't get the jab, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, you know, so you're kind of like, okay, so now the government says, okay, well, if you're going to start applying, if you're going to start looking at preferences and, and opinions, then um, yeah, you, you you don't you don't have um, a leg to stand on, and and I think that's the um, that's the trick. And I think with with 
with religious exemption. The religious exemption, um, as um, I was talking with Gideon, shout to Gideon, um, and, and, and Gideon made a great point about, um, you know, religious exemption isn't for Christians, right? It covers the government's butt, not the Christian's butt. It's a loophole. It's a loophole. And it's, it's, it's a general, um, it's, it's just a general clause that the government mentions, but they don't plan to enforce, right? It's, it, so for example, if, if the yeah. government, if you, if you, right, so let's say you get a letter of uh, religious exemption, right? <laughs> and, and, you, and you go to Jack Astor's, right? They go throw you out on your Astor. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. Like, what are you, are we gonna call the manager? Hey, hey, look, yo, the man's using Romans fourteen. Yo, you can't exegete. Like, that's not. A, <laughs> like, like, that's no. We're not gonna sit there and have Bible study in Denny's like we used to back in the day and say, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He's using Romans fourteen in the right context. Allow, you know, allow him in. Get him a pancake. It doesn't. It doesn't work like that. Yep. Right. So it's it's one of those it's one of those bait and switch. So for Christians have to be mindful of of like, okay, you know what? Yo, it's not it's not really a thing. This you know, religious exemption is not really a thing. They're just doing it to make it make sure it looks like they're not violating people's uh quote unquote constitutional rights. And I mean quote because it's not they're not really trying to do that. Yeah, no, I, I think I think you hit the nail on the head. Uh, you know, it's sort of the religious exemption thing is is at least maybe it was intentionally put in place you know even the original constitution right like it was there as a placeholder and if you look at the trajectory of the government i would argue they're continually uh going to try to undermine it right the prime example that comes to my mind is when we had the the episode on trinity uh college in bc or trinity Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a long time ago, right? And 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 in essence, you know, they pulled this crazy level of human rights stuff that that to me just doesn't it doesn't hold up to to a reasonable scrutiny of of you know the Constitution, but but somehow it did, right? And and you know, it's like if you can make a good argument to get around the religious exemption, well, it looks like the government, the courts. They're willing to do so, but you have to have a good argument. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, no, good point. Uh, so let me ask you, what's your two cents? Uh, I, I mean, I think, you know, what I said before regarding, um, I think of playing the game is a problem. Um, I think that the vaccine passports themselves are fundamentally a violation of rights. Um, I mean, we didn't really get into this too much but but i think the the concept of rights i've sort of been taught I, I probably have talked about it a bunch on the show but in general i've been talking about it for a while i think most people have no concept of rights what do they mean where do they come from you know even the the concept of inalienable rights right when we were with, with mark Thiessen, he talked about you know john locke trying to to do you know derive or talk about rights by removing you know the sanctity of life remove the god piece of the argument but for so many people and i know this isn't a canadian concept it's the american concept of inalienable rights but but most people have no perspective at all on what that means why is it a thing what is the relevance of of inalienable rights why do they matter what is what have they done over time of history? And I think this is just another example of a poor understanding of principles and therefore the ability to trample all over them, trample all over rights, doesn't matter to most people because they have no concept of what a right really is. When society is telling us that internet is a human right, they have no idea what a, a right is. And to me, this is just another example of that, that, that people don't care about rights and they're going to reap the consequences of it in ways that they can't even comprehend. Mm. And, and there's a great quote that sort of talks about, you know, where were you when they came for X? Or there was no one. And, and essentially the idea is like, 
eventually they're going to come for you and there'll be nobody left to stand up. Mm. So, yeah. you know, that's where for me, um, I, as I said, you know, for those that have already been vaccinated, if they're, you know, the listeners that, that have already been vaccinated, whether <laughs> by choice or not, um, I think you really need to, you know, take what I've been saying for a few years and, and recognize you need to vote with your money. Voting with your money is the primary means in which you vote. And if you're going to continue to support businesses that are enforcing the vaccine passports, and I know that they may not have a choice, you know, you're just perpetuating this problem. Yeah. Um, and I'd like to add to your two cents. I'm, 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 I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you one cent <laughs> add to your two cents. So you have three cents. Uh, I, I think one of the points that you made is, um, right. So it's an economic concept of, um, right. Economics is, the reallocation of scarce resources. And so it's cause and effect, it's trade-offs. And so when you marginalize one part of the market, um, people are going to take their money and their resources and go elsewhere. What creates wealth in a country is um, people being able, well, just having people being able to work together Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things we overlook, like work together um, and communicate. So when you divide and marginalize people, people are going to take their money and they're going to take their skills and go elsewhere. And there'll be other um, markets opening up and other opportunities opening up because, you know, people are going to say, yeah, like, OK, you know what? I want to vote with my money and open up other opportunities. So I, th- I thought that was a good point. So so what's your what's your two cents? My two cents. Uh, yeah, man, this was a uh, this took this, this took a lot of thought, man. Mm-hmm. This took a lot of thought because this is a it's a dicey issue, uh, and so so where I fall, I think that um, religious exemption only works before the Lord and not the government. So this discussion is a theological exercise in secondary and tertiary issues, not primary ones. Mm-hmm. So the government. Um, may not honor your religious conviction, but the Lord will. Mm. So uh, though interpreting the vaccine uh, as, as the mark of the beast is bad exegesis, uh, the conviction can work as a religious exemption. So long as it's, uh, so long as it's uh, a civic issue and not a salvific one. Salvific meaning salvation, a primary issue. Mm. Mm. Right, so uh, there are no Bible verses denouncing vaccines, but there are verses promoting freedom of conscience from sin. So, if you believe you are sinning, um, if you get vaccinated, or it's stopping you from doing your religious duty to God or causing you to sin, then you have grounds for religious exemption. And I'd like to end with Romans uh, chapter fourteen. Verse 22 to 23. Blessed are those who don't feel guilty for doing something they have decided is right. Verse 23. But if you have doubts about whether or not you should eat something, you are sinning if you go ahead and do it. For you are not following your convictions. If you do anything you believe is not right, you are sinning. And that's the bottom line. Because Darnell said so. Because do good at Darnell said so. Actually, no, actually it wasn't me. It was Paul who said so. <laughs> uh, well, and, and I mean, you know, with, with the timing of all this, I know this is sort of a sidebar, but with the timing of all this, of, of vaccine passports and essentially marginalizing a group within our society, and let's just start for argument's sake, things continue to become more and more marginalized, hopefully with nothing overly detrimental to people. At the t- same time that we're having all this conversation about truth and reconciliation with the indigenous communities, we, if you take a lot of those principles of what they did and substitute indigenous with the term unvaccinated, how much parallels would do you see? And, and this is where I've always said, so many things that we see government as the problem or, or government failures, 
we think people society goes oh well if we have the right benevolent dictator in that role then there's no problem and and i would suggest that rather than looking at the um indigenous communities tragedies and and the things that happen there and say how do we prevent government from doing this again to another group of people right we don't have that conversation about how do we prevent such a thing from <laughs> happening again <laughs> And and I would argue, again, we're not there. I'm not saying the unvaccinated scenario is there. But if the trajectory continues, how long before unvaccinated parents have their unvaccinated children taken away from them? Mm -hmm. And in those scenarios, this is exactly what happened to indigenous communities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and so my point is that we, as a society, fail to say, oh, maybe we shouldn't give the monopoly on power the power to do this thing that they failed and did a tragedy the last time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well said. Well, well, well said. Well said, Joel. Uh, if you guys disagree and want to give us your two cents and you feel like our exegesis is off, we could do this again. We could do this again uh, and, and, and go over some of those verses or anything we misread or misinterpreted. Let us know your two cents. You can contact us at six report six cents report at gmail.com. Uh, like us on Facebook. Love us on Facebook. Like us on Facebook. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter. Um, and if you're trying to get in touch with me, it's on Twitter or Instagram. It's do good at Darnell, D O G U D D A underscore Darnell. And then Darnell Samuels on Facebook. And I'm T Joel N39 everywhere. Um, yeah, if you uh, if you aren't following me on Instagram, well, or Facebook, you're not seeing all of my crazy stories. Yeah, if you're not following Joel, you're not saved. <laughs> if you ain't here, you ain't nowhere. Yeah, saved from government propaganda. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, oh, and also, guys, please um, give us a review on your podcatcher. Um, yeah, if, I, if I've seen a few more reviews come in, so we'll have to maybe read some and and. Oh, really? Yeah, hopefully, I think hopefully there's a couple that might be a little semi. I think it's like a five star rating with a semi humbling comment, so we'll we'll have to. Uh, okay, read okay, those yeah, off. yeah, yeah, so, yeah, but yeah, guys, um, it, um, if you're really enjoying the show, um, like, comment, give share, us a review, you know, all that jazz share, on your uh, all that catcher, all that but, fancy uh, stuff. Um, yeah, if you don't and, use iTunes, since iTunes is like the biggest one in the world, go on iTunes and write a review there too. That would be awesome. So, anyways, you know what it is. Six cents makes change. But you heard me. Does that make sense? Madden and Mitchell Media.